ठीक है सर स्टार्ट करें अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी सर स्क्रीन शेयर हो गई हां हां सर एक बार स्टार्ट करवा सके ओके बिल है सर स्टार्ट इसको क्लोज कर दें जो ले आ रहे हैं ना सर इसको क्लोज जी जी ये बताएं मेरी आवाज जा रही है ना स्टूडेंट्स आवाज बिल्कुल सही आ रही है सर आपका कैमरा चलेगा या नहीं मेरा कैमरा पता नहीं साकिब नहीं कैमरा आ नहीं रहा और है ना ये इनको बोले ये सेटिंग हटा दें क्योंकि बार-बार बार-बार आपको डिस्टर्ब आ रहा है साकिब यार ये लोग चले जाते हैं एक बार बार ना एक अब बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम सॉरी फॉर द ट्रबल देयर वाज अ Uh, trouble in the connectivity. <clears throat> I am Dr. Amar, consultant plastic surgeon. Today our uh, lecture topic is, is special types of burn. We have already done uh, the different types of fire burn uh, in previous lecture, and uh, today is the uh, special types of burn. Apart from the fire burn, uh, the other types of burn. Uh, apart from the fire burn we are discussing today and uh, today's lecture comprises of uh, what types of burn uh, electrical burn the second most common burn after flame burn is the uh, electrical burn maine aapko pehle bhi i have given you the, the def- uh, definition of burn i think you people remember burn is an injury that's why i am a surgeon who is dealing with the burn and burn is injury as a result of application of thermal contact uh, as a result of application of thermal therm both heat and cold both comes under the heading of thermal thermal and by absorption of electrical energy ye electrical burn aa gaya usme radiation burn aa gaya <coughs> and by chemical contact ये केमिकल बर्न उसमें आ जाता है तो इलेक्ट्रिकल बर्न अकर्स एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ फिजिकल एनर्जी बाय डेफिनेशन एंड नाउ कम टू द इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजरी अबाउट वन थाउजेंड डेथ्स अकर पर ईयर इन यूएस जस्ट इमेजिन द फिगर इज मच मच हायर इन अवर कंट्री but uh, the main thing is that uh, great morbidity is there patient lose their uh, functional parts of the body and uh, sometimes they lost the whole limb upper limb or lower limb especially the upper limb i have done so many amputations on uh, electrical burn victims uh i think uh, per per year per year or if you say on per week two or three and just imagine two or three per week that means uh 12 10 12 per month and you can easily imagine more than 100 per year just imagine they become handicap usually the right limb is involved in order to protect themselves or Uh, when they are doing an unfair means in order to uh, get electrical supply <clears throat> very well known kunda in our country this is the reason especially uh, in the villages villages and suburbs kunda is very very popular and because of this they usually uh don't use any protective measures this is the main problem uh, they are very brave you can easily imagine they are dealing with sometimes with the 10 11000 watt 30000 watt and uh, they are doing all these things with bare bare hand uh, without any protective measures uh, although the uh, uh, this act of kunda is uh, illegal and uh, people have to think about it what they are doing and uh, in doing this act uh, they will get a great punishment and that punishment 
would result in loss of their hands. <clears throat> now, going to the uh, electrical burn, approximately 1,000 uh, deaths occur per year in US. Just imagine 1,000 deaths in US. So, what would be the condition in our country where the literacy rate is so low and uh, poverty is there? Joule's effect. This is the main thing which is uh, uh, responsible for the destruction of the tissues through which the electrical current is passed. Joule effect. Uh, Joule was the scientist who uh, described this. Okay, once the electrical energy passed through any, any part, it will produce heat. Uh, it converted into heat and this heat generation depends upon what the resistance, the duration of the current and the intensity of the current. Uh, I stands for current and 2 multiplied by resistance uh, which a tissue offer or which uh, anything uh, through which current is passing that offer uh, and the time duration of the current through which it is passing through that object or part of the human body. You can easily imagine the electrical energy once passed through, uh, right now we are talking about the human beings, through any part of the body, it depends upon the heat production which it produces and the resistance offered by the tissues through which it is passing. And uh, depends upon the time duration and the intensity of the current, whether it is 11,000 watt, whether it is 420 watt, or uh, it is uh, 30,000 watt. Once 30,000 watt is passing, you can imagine there would be a maximum damage. And uh, especially the upper limb is involved, as I told you before, in order to protect themselves or in order to, uh, in doing that act of Kunda, they usually use right hand because most of the population is right handed. <laughs> Once the electrical energy passes through that limb or that part of the body, usually the limbs, upper limb, lower limb. And uh, the, that part becomes cooked. The energy is of so intensity that it leads to destruction of the tissues, uh, especially the deeper tissues. The uh, destruction comes out from the underlying tissues to outside. The reverse is in fire burn. As I told you, first surface is involved in fire burn. Keep these things in your mind. Sometimes skin will remain spared in cases of electrical burn. But the underlying destruction is so extensive that the patient has lost their limbs. Skin will remain for a considerable time will remain normal by appearance, by appearance, normal, looks normal for a few days. And later on, it also becomes necrotic. But initially, because the changes are from inside towards the outside, uh, what changes occur? Uh, once electrical current has passed through the limb, uh, they passes first. The nerves catch them because nerves are like wires in our body. Nerves, they catch them. They pass through the nerves without uh, having any resistance. That's why the nerves has got less damage as compared to most compact structure in the limb, which is the bone. Once they passing through the bones, the bones offer highest resistance to electrical energy. That converted into on Joule's effect, they converted into this is also called the Joule's first law. Uh, that energy converted into heat. Once it gets resistance, as the Joule said, if resistance is there, 
duration of current is uh, longer and uh, the resistance is there duration of current is longer and the intensity of the current is higher like 30000 watt what will happen maximum heat will generate sometimes the bone become red hot once the bone becomes so much hot it will definitely destroy the muscles around it the most inside uh, deeper muscle is fdp flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor pollicis longus they are very close to the bone in the upper limb and once uh, they will get so much heat energy which is transferred to them through the bones they involve first and they involve um, very badly and they become totally necrotic and uh, how much you will uh, how much early you will start treatment in burn patients uh, you won't get fdp and flexopolysis longus fpl you can't spare them you have to excise them i will tell you later in the treatment part but this is the story once somebody uh, receive current through uh, right now uh, we are uh, giving an example of upper limb because mostly upper limb is involved or any part of the body lower limb uh, hip joint or vertebra wherever it is passing it will definitely get highest resistance and right now i'm talking about the current current whenever passing through a bone it will receive highest resistance and as a result of that resistance the bones become hot and even red hot it depends upon the intensity and duration of the current and once it pass it will definitely destroy the tissues which are around the bones because bones are not naked they are covered with muscles and the muscles <coughs> and bone become red hot you can easily imagine all the eating muscles and uh, when muscles are involved they become swollen once they become swollen as a result of this uh, absorption of lot of heat and uh, they are wrapped in a fascia as you know they are wrapped in a fascia uh, or they are enclosed in a fascia in different compartments let's concentrate in the upper limb and uh, once they start swelling and they are wrapped as i told you they are wrapped in a fascia what will happen because of the limited expansion of that fascia the muscles uh, they produce lot of pressure there lot of increase in intra tissue pressure and that pressure what it leads to it will compress the soft tissue within that limb what are the soft tissues try to concentrate vessels vessels are the soft tissues veins and arteries they start compressing the circulation of that part of the body especially in the limb where the muscles are wrapped in the fascia in the lower limb muscles are wrapped in the fascia what will happen as a result of compression of these blood vessels which are accommodated uh, blood vessel which are in the neighboring close to the close to the muscles uh, the blood supply start diminishing and finally uh, the muscles become ischemic once these muscles become ischemic lot of pain will be there number 1 number 2 lot of swelling is there and patient will feel lot of pain lot of swelling and uh, once they reach us the first thing which we have to do in the electrical burn that's why i am telling you electrical burn is a special type of burn which cannot be dealt by any other surgeon uh, because burn surgeon can do all these things or a plastic surgeon can do all these things because he know how to deal with these types of burns you cannot 
create the electrical burn like the fire burn which i have told you in my previous lecture what do you have to do you have to release the pressure onto the muscles and once the pressure gets released onto the muscles what will happen the mus the pressure on the blood vessel also gets released and the circulation will establish pain will be subsided definitely patient uh, feel quite relieved once you release that pressure how you are going to release that pressure fasciotomy fasciotomy of the involved limb is mandatory once patient reached at a hospital or to a particular burn surgeon it is a uh, mandatory to release the pressure first and then think about other things you have to make cuts in the skin these cuts doesn't release pressure you have to make cut in the fascia that is why it is called as fasciotomy what i have told you in burn the in fire burn in the previous lecture once in fire burn we also make cuts which are called as ischerotomy in fire burn it is called as ischerotomy because we are making cuts in the skin scarred skin we are cutting a scar that is called as ischerotomy ischar means scar ischerotomy in fire burn because in fire burn the compartment syndrome which is not so true one as we will face in electrical burn the true compartment syndrome occurs in electrical burn always remember among the fire burns because the changes occur from inside to outside and uh, the muscles they start swelling as a result of uh, exposure to heat lot of heat and because of the uh, because of the highest resistance produced by the bone as a result the bone become red hot i am repeating it again and again because it is uh, if you will get an idea uh, you cannot forget it longer time uh bone bone become red hot and as a result of that uh, red hot bone it will affect onto the muscles what effect it will inflame the muscles and the muscles become swollen as a result of inflammation and remember that the, these muscles are uh, wrapped in a fascia and that fascia has got a limited elasticity and as a result of uh, this uh, limited elasticity they will offer highest resistance for uh, in, uh, for accommodation of the swollen muscles and these swollen muscles they will once they so uh, start swelling they will increase the intra tissue pressure and that intra tissue pressure what it leads to ischemia of the muscles as a result of stoppage of the circulation through the veins and the arteries that means ischemia of the muscles develop and this ischemia what it leads to swelling of the lot lot of swelling of the limb number 1 number 2 the patient suffering from lot of pain and once it is reached to a burn center or a hospital uh the first thing which you have to do release the pressure by this releasing the pressure you are decreasing the pain of the patient it is very dramatic if you have seen these cases many students i think they have seen uh, they have done the electives in burn center with me and uh, if they will get a chance uh they uh, they can appreciate uh, very easily uh that once you make cuts in electrical burn if the patient reach initially in initial moments of the uh, of receiving the injury they will feel lot of relief from the pain number one once you make a cut but always remember in fire burn you are making cut only in the skin you will get benefit because the skin become inelastic in fire burn as a result of circumferential burn of that limb circumferential burn is very necessary in fire burn uh, or most of the skin if uh, burn of any part of the body even the chest is not ex started expanding uh, if somebody is involving the chest uh, there will be the ishar 
or the burned skin which you can call ishar uh, it becomes so hard that patient feels lot of trouble in uh, respiration what do you have to do you make cuts in the ishar this is called as keratotomy in the fire burn likewise if limb is involved a circumferential burn is there or most of the limb is uh, ishard then you have to make cuts in the ishar steroidomy in fire burn and uh, in uh, electrical burn what happened as i told you skin is minimally involved or involved later on initially the structures inside they involved what they leads to they leads to lot of pain increase in pressure and you have to make cuts in order to release the pressure in the limb of that part of the body uh but in this uh, situation you won't get proper relief by only cutting the skin you have to cut the fascia in which the muscles are wrapped the main pressure generation within the uh, intramuscular compartment is due to in elasticity of the fascia you have to cut the fascia and once you cut the fascia along with the skin because you have to cut the skin in order to reach the fascia you cannot get access to the fascia without cutting the skin you have to make cuts and in the skin and in the fascia as well while in fire burn you don't need to cut the fascia because the changes are superficial in case of the fire burn while in the electrical burn the changes are from inside to out and the maximum damage is in the deeper tissues as i told you bone and the muscle which are around the bone and once you make cut the patient will feel lot of relief circulation start once you relieve the uh, pressure and once the circulation start muscles start getting their blood supply ischemia abolish and the patient feel a lot of pain a lot of relief that means the most important thing initially which we have to do in electrical burn is the what what it is fasciotomy fasciotomy is the initial this you can see this limb in this limb the current has passed through hole of the limb patient hold the wire in his hand you can see the contracture of the fingers as a result of a deep wound underneath this fingers i think i have another slide in which this is given no no uh, sorry uh, you can easily see the swollen limb in this picture lot of swelling is there but in this uh, uh, the patient hold the wire and uh, there is a deep wound that is called as wound of entrance is underneath this uh, underneath the fingers but the changes are in the whole of the limb but why on the wrist there is a wound and the other sides are spared because uh, the once the electrical current is passing uh, it will pass through the tendons the tendons are very close to the skin in the wrist joint in the elbow joint and in the axilla that's why is skin of the wrist joint skin over the wrist joint over the axilla and over the uh, shoulder joint uh, they involved uh, they show like this i think in uh, this the uh, uh, current is maximum passes through the wrist joint and uh, during when once it traversing uh, through the limb it will show the it will hold the tendons which are passing through the wrist joint and these tendons they 
deliver that heat to the skin of the wrist joint and uh, this will happen but uh, this picture is uh, i think about uh, uh, three or four days old but initially only you can get a blue mark on the skin uh, on, on the wrist and the elbow joint or the shoulder through which the current is passing but you can see that the, all the skin of the rest of the limb is spared even the skin of the palm you can see showing nothing but as the time passes this skin also gets involved but initially you cannot get any mark of burn although the burn is inside lot of burn lot of destruction is inside and now this were the uh, local effect and now come to the what uh, what uh, systemic effect uh, electrical burn is uh, producing on the body it leads to cardiac dysrhythmias this is the most important always remember and uh, up to 30% of the high voltage injuries what is the high voltage injuries we have divided the uh, it is coming in the uh, in the the following part of the presentation but uh, up to the 30% uh, high voltage injuries they show cardiovascular involvement uh, you have to address these cardiovascular involvement initially as i told you you have to address the fasciotomy initially once the patient reach to the hospital you have to concentrate on those these two things number one is the fasciotomy in order to release the pressure to restore the blood supply of the limb and likewise you have to look for the cardiac dysrhythmias or cardiac involvement immediately send a troponin in the, uh, test uh, in order to get an idea about the ischemic changes in the heart and ecg initially all these things uh, you must need all these things if at the site the patient has cardio respiratory arrest certainly needs certainly needs cpr at that time before uh, shifting the patient to the hospital you have to perform if somebody is having uh, idea of uh, cpr he must cpr the patient start cpr cardio pulmonary resuscitation in order to establish the circulation and the respiration otherwise patient may die if you will uh, busy you are busy in uh, shifting the patient and you are not concentrating uh, on his uh, cardio respiratory arrest you have to address the cardio respiratory arrest at the site of incidence always remember it is a serious emergency don't waste the time neurological effects they are late quite late neurological effect especially uh, once current traversing through the head there is a rapid loss of consciousness immediately there will be uh, uh, conscious loss of consciousness later on uh, weakness of the limbs and there are so many things which happen as a result of passage of the current through the nerves uh, these uh, changes appear later as i was telling you uh, i'll uh, we will definitely get in the following uh, presentation the what is a low voltage injury and what is a high voltage injury a uh, low voltage injury is a, a injury uh, exposure to electrical current uh, less than 1000 watt if uh, somebody is a uh, exposure to a current less than 1000 volt but i don't think that uh, uh, it is not a serious problem it may become serious always remember it may lead to cardiac arrest cardiac involvement will be there at serious cardiac involvement which may lead to cardiac arrest dysrhythmias Uh, even on this low voltage uh, but high voltage injuries are those injuries which are more than 1000 watt 
usually the domestic electrical currents they are of low voltage uh, because uh, in our uh, setup with 220 watts in the houses and 440 on the lines which are your uh, which are outside your houses and uh, high voltage injuries uh, they are uh, once uh, the electrical current is more than 1000 volt it is called as high voltage injuries what i was talking to you in the initial uh, moments of my presentation um, it was about the high voltage injuries once high voltage injury comes in contact with the limb of a patient what it leads to deep, deep muscle injuries i have told you so many times uh, when this uh, deep muscle injury occur and what it leads to it leads to compartment syndrome true compartment syndrome as a result of a lot of increase in the intra tissue pressure the reason i have told you and uh, there you will get in this high voltage injury you will get a wound of entrance and a wound of exit and these two areas you can easily recognize because in those two areas there is a full thickness there is a full thickness necrosis because once this high voltage comes in contact with the skin it will also damage the tissues locally and later on the damage occurs as a result of as i told you highest resistance offered by the tissues depends upon the resistance of the tissues which they offer uh, to the passage of uh, that current through its pathway so uh, the effect on the skin is minimal but on the area of entrance and area of the wound not of necrosis not only of the skin of the tissues is also there underlying tissue also gets necrotic uh, because uh, 11000 watt and 30000 they may lead to sudden cardiac arrest fracture and dislocations bowel perforation sometimes paralytic alias and spinal cord transfusion uh, if they in, uh, involve the spinal cord especially once patient involve head and neck they also cause the spinal cord and uh, physiological spinal cord transaction uh, up to 25% of cases and as a result patient becomes paralytic also uh, general management as i told you the dcg and uh, other patient uh, in order to evaluate the cardiac state and uh, perform the patient immediately and the other thing is that uh, after really the compartment syndrome patient in the fourth point patient me to release the compartment and after this release you have to check the destruction of the muscles as a result of this electrical injury how you are going to check the very well indication is the color of the urine the stress catheterize the patient and uh, keep on watching the color of the urine if the color of the urine starts showing high colored that means lot of rhabdomyolysis is there and rhabdomyolysis uh, means a uh, lot of rhabdomyolysis is there because of a uh, lot of uh, lot of inflammation which the muscles these muscles suffer because of the lot of inflammation and why is inflammation because of the heat energy which is offered during the passage of the current through the bone 
and myoglobin this is the myoglobin urea always remember this dark urea is a myoglobin urea it is nothing it is a myoglobin urea and you have to be careful because once this myoglobin is passing through the uh, kidney this high colored urine once it is started passing through the kidney it will damage the renal tubules what will happen later patient goes into acute renal failure the two things which are very important in electrical burn number one is the fasciotomy and you have to address the consequences which occurs as a result of this compartment syndrome what consequences rhabdomyolysis and this rhabdomyolysis how you are going to assess the rhabdomyolysis by observing the color of the urine you have to observe the color of the urine keep on observing once you will get a high colored urine a brown color you can get even in so much dark color you 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 can get that uh, it looks like uh, so what do you call it coca cola or any dark beverage dark color beverages <clears throat> and uh, once uh, you will get this type of uh, urine star uh, when you will get rise the patient irrigate the patient immediately start irrigation how you are going to irrigate the patient with 100 ml per hour urinary output you have to keep the urinary output 100 ml per hour in order to wash off the kidneys number 1 you have to make the urine alkaline by giving lot of fluid number 1 and by giving soda bicarb why you are uh, making the urine alkaline because if you are not producing alkaline media then the urine which is passing through the uh, kidney this urine which is having lot of myoglobin this myoglobin is start precipitating on the renal tubular epithelium and once the uh, it gets uh, precipitated over the renal tubular epithelium it will generate inflammatory reaction there and it will leads to destruction of the renal tubular epithelium and as a result of this destruction of the renal tubular epithelium swelling inflammation is there and what it leads to it leads to acute renal failure finally you have to save the kidney once uh, you will observe a high colored urine uh, you have to observe it uh, in order to uh, save the kidneys like this and uh, later on uh, you have to divide the uh, tissues which are been uh, you have to perform amputation of that part elevation cardiac dysrhythmia sometimes it occurs late neurological problem as i told you epilepsy you can expect epileptic fits you can expect encephalopathy is in uh, brain stem dysfunction uh as i told you muscular atrophy occur as a result of involvement of cord uh, cataract six months even the, even after six months uh, we, we have received so many uh, few patients uh, those who uh, complain of uh, shortness of sight and uh, on examination we will get cataract in these patients even after few months even after six months you can expect in 30% of the patient of high voltage injuries this was all about the electrical burn i told you i in a very detail the electrical burn which are you after the fire burn the most of the patient which we are receiving in our burn center they are the victims of electrical burn always remember cold injuries we have received very few patients and now go through this cold injuries what what to do and what to perform cold injuries exposure extremities to very very cold weather uh, uh like sachin in pakistan uh cell death occur cell necrosis in the peripheral areas ice crystals within the cells the uh, ice crystals they form in the cells and extracellular space 
as well as in the microcirculation thrombosis occur. And these thrombosis, what it leads to ischemia of the peripheral part, as I've told you, the mild frostbite you can expect in uh, initially, number one, initially. Later on, if this, uh, uh, this environment remain continue, what will happen? Second deadly frostbite will be there. Blister will be formed. A partial thickness burn. And if it will continue more for a longer time, third degree, full thickness necrosis of the skin occur. And later on in four degree, if uh, patient is not uh, protecting uh, himself or he is not getting any chance to get rid of this place or this environment, full thickness of skin necrosis will occur. Uh, I think the, the, this picture will give you an idea. This picture will give you an idea. You can see blister is there. The blister is there, uh, healthy skin, and they start redness initially, and uh, blisters, and uh, second degree uh, ischemia, the fingers, peripheral parts. Initially, peripheral parts become pale, and uh, later on, uh, and later on, uh, the they turn into necrotic necrotic tissue, third degree and fourth degree. Uh, I will show you the pictures. You can get an idea. Oh, now come to the management. Removal of all the wet clothes, gloves, socks. Make the patient warm. The main idea is the warm in warm blankets, whatever you will have at that time. Uh, warm by achieving the use of intravenous fluid. If you have got facility, you can give a warm intravenous fluid. Irrigate the bladder with warm solution. It just The idea is just to make the patient warm. Uh, uh, Adjuvant therapies are not so important. You have to give calcium channel blockers, I see, but the, make the patient warm. These are the other photographs. You can get an idea how severe it is. Just imagine the, the all the fingers which are involved, they become black. Uh, surgery, once you, you, you will get uh, demarcation, you have to perform the surgeries. In this picture, black and the healthy, there is a demarcation. Uh, this patient is very lucky. I, she will get the uh, medical treatment very early. That's why the, only the big toe and the second toe and the uh, half of the third toe be gone. And just uh, warm the patient initially. Now come to the chemical injuries. Chemical burn is also common. The third common in our board is the chemical injuries. Uh, what it leads to? Let's see. What it leads to? Chemical injury. I think I can continue my lecture. Uh, the time is over now. But uh, your other lecture is going to be started from the after the 12. I think uh, you all agree on this. Uh, it is very interesting, burn, And I try to make it more interesting uh, by repeating my lecture again and again in order to give you an idea uh, what is the mechanism and uh, what security is uh, on how to manage it initially, especially initially. Uh, in, in chemical burn, we, uh, like the electrical burn, initial movements are very, very important. Very, very important. I, I think uh, you have uh, read in the newspapers uh, four days back, four or five days back, uh, we received two victims, a lady, a lot of uh, involving a lot of uh, area of the body, about 36%. And uh, another person by the name of Usman, somebody's flesh, somebody, uh, her ex wife uh, is flesh. The females are also in this business. Don't think that only men can throw uh, acids. Uh, her ex-wife with uh, her brother. She splashed the acid on the face and other parts of the body of Mr. Osman. He's also admitted. And uh, you, you can easily imagine once somebody threw acid onto the face of the patient, what will happen? Most important, the eyes, which are important. So, uh, what do you have to do? 
it depends upon the acid uh, intensity of the damage depends upon the acid uh, contact of the acid to the offending uh, or the any offending agent it may be a base it may be you know 2500 chemicals can leads to destruction to the body body tissues especially the chemicals which are used in industries and agriculture agriculture may leads to inhalation injury also <clears throat> which we are discuss later uh, now to the chemical injuries always remember they leads to destruction of the protein our body is uh, comprises of protein and they leads to destruction of the protein or coagulation necrosis and uh, the uh, most important thing as i told you the initial movements treatment in the initial movements irrigate 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 by irrigate by what by plain water you can get plain water anywhere if somebody uh, inform you that somebody splash uh, acid on him or her or accidentally his any body part comes in contact uh, with a strong chemical solution you can't say it is acid any strong chemical solution can lead to this type of uh, injury uh, then uh, you have to give advice to the patient or if patient came to you you have to irrigate it irrigate 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 in order to separate that offending agent from the that part of the body which is involved uh, but always remember irrig during irrigation you must be gentle because the tissues are friable always remember you must be gentle because the tissues are friable and uh, be careful do not uh, use your hands in order to wash the chemical or offending agent from the victim's body because you may involve yourself always be careful uh, irrigate it gently number 1 do not rub it because the tissues are friable and uh, irrigate for how long till the patient's pain subside or at least 30 to 40 minutes at least minimum 30 40 better is uh, till the uh, pain gets subside or you are sure about the uh, all complete removal of the offending agent you must be sure about the complete removal of the agent acid uh, and bases should not be neutralized this is this is a question many people ask uh, if acid is there you can pull you can uh, uh, apply a base in order to neutralize it always remember neutralization effect also generate heat it is exothermic reaction it itself start producing uh, heat there the patient uh, the injury or gets deeper down if you are uh, doing uh, something like that the only uh, rule in hydrofluoric acid which is used in the industries you have to neutralize it by the calcium gluconate uh, or calcium chloride whatever you will get the only only uh, only uh, thing uh, where you must think about the neutralization otherwise don't think about it uh, always remember bases are more dangerous as compared to the uh, acids why because their deeper penetration because they lead to saponification they uh, melt the uh, fat underneath the tissues and the it is straight away goes and come in contact with the deeper tissues like bone it comes in contact with the bone the treatment of the acid burn these are the victims very bad shape this woman was admitted in our ward somebody threw 
I think somebody, you know, her husband, her husband, usually the husbands they through nowadays, uh, wives are also coming this in this business. As I told you, they are starting throwing the or splashing the assets on the faces of the husbands, and uh, this child was also brought to, and uh, this hand is involved uh, as a result of uh, contact with the chemical. This this is also uh, always remember. Once you will get a patient of chemical burn, first irrigate and then uh, wait for the demarcation or the uh, clear cut appearance of the necrotic tissues. Remove that necrotic tissue. They are usually in the uh, full thickness burn and uh, resurface with the skin graft. That is all. That is all about the chemical burn. But always remember, once you will uh, get a patient or <coughs> when you will get uh, uh, any, uh, you will get uh, incidents where uh, somebody involved or comes in contact with the chemical, start irrigating it right at the site of incidents. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, because it is a precious time. Always remember, it is a precious time, especially in chemical burn. Right now, start if somebody. Uh, uh, give you uh, information that someone is having uh, contact with the acid or somebody splashed acid on his face or any part of the face. Immediately advise him. Always remember. Immediately advise him. Start irrigating before reaching to the hospital. Don't waste that precious time. We see many patients after splashing the acids they visit the burn center or uh, they go to any hospital with same acid on their that part of the body. They think that if they irrigate, blisters will be there. This, this is a common myth. Blisters will be there. Always remember blisters never occur as a result of splashing of water or application of the water onto the surface of the burned area, not in the fire burn, not in the any other type of burn. This is a very common myth. If you splash water, blisters will be there. This would not happen. Never, never, never blisters occur as a result of splashing of water. With splashing of water in the fire burn in initial stages, as I told you before, is very, very helpful. And uh, in chemical burn, it is also very helpful. Not only helpful, it is an initial part of treatment. If you get a patient in your hospital who has, uh, who has received uh, somebody splash uh, acid or accidentally he comes in contact with the acid or any chemical, about a one or two or three hours back and is still having that chemical on the surface when the patient reached to you. So the immediate treatment is just to wash the chemical, wash that acid, wash that base, start washing that, but gently, always remember, gently, because tissues are friable there. You can make a lot of injuries to that area by rubbing that area. Don't rub. Always the pressure of the water should be gentle. Do not apply the water with uh, high pressure because it may lead to injury to the uh, tissues where you are <coughs> cleaning that uh, chemical because the tissues are friable. Always remember, tissues are friable. I think you can get an idea how to... Uh, treat a chemical burn patient, you will receive in future. Always remember, once you will become doctor, uh, you will get a chance of practice into the hospitals. Uh, in the ER, you will definitely receive many patients of chemical burn, fire burn, electrical burn. Uh, that's right, this uh, today's topic is very, very important. Even the fire burn, you have to receive many patients and uh, in, especially in electrical burn and chemical burn, you have to make decision immediately. 
always demand by immediately in chemical bond it is very easy you can educate the patient or his uh, relatives just splash the water before reaching to the hospital continue splashing the water throughout the way before reaching always remember do not stop irrigating do not stop irrigating the uh, wound or the part of the body with the plain water keep the bottles of water and irrigate throughout the uh, journey before reaching to the uh, hospital this is really very feasible always remember it will decrease lot of depth it will be if lot of it if it gets lot of effect on the depth of the burn if you start in irrigating in initial moments patient may have only superficial burn or a partial thickness burn which will heal within a month as i told you partial thickness burn 3 weeks or month that is all the story will end there otherwise if that chemical remain on the that part of the body for a considerable time even half an hour is enough i think less than half an hour is it depends upon the concentration of the chemical also and uh, what it leads to it leads to full thickness burn and once full thickness burn is there as i have shown you in in this this is the full thickness burn what happened you have to excise the skin and you have to remove the tissues and you have to graft it chances of contraction are there there are so many things if you wash it in initially the superficial uh, areas are involved Heal healing occurs spontaneously no need of any surgical intervention now come to the radiation injury and these are the these are the special type of injuries which uh, uh, occurs uh especially in those patient which are exposed to radiation uh in our setup cancer patients and uh, the patients who are working uh, and the, those who are working in the areas where the uh, radiation uh, radiated uh, radiations are there there are very very few uh, areas where you can expect uh, the treatment uh, uh, damage is difficult to define and delay surgery until the demarcation Uh, let wait, uh, treat it like uh, other burns, and let it like fire burn, and uh, uh, let wait for the uh, demarcation. Come if necrotic tissues are there, like in chemical burn, you have to excise that tissue and resurface the uh, area with the graft. Similar principles. Uh, inhalation injury. Inhalation injury is suggest always remember. Inhalation injury. Uh, only a few minutes are left. I'll. Tell you, inhalation injury is an injury as a result of inhalation of smoke. If somebody inhale a lot of smoke, always remember, a person was found in a room where lot of smoke is there, and he was not burned. Any part of the uh, of the body is not involved. No mark of burn on the body of the patient, but patient was was found unconscious in that closed room. he in a lot of smoke you label that patient as a victim of inhalation injury inhalation injury is result it results as a, it occurs as a result of uh inhalation of lot of smoke uh, symptoms uh hoarseness of voice if patient is conscious hoarseness of voice stridor uh cough restlessness and in, among the signs if somebody is having a uh, fire burn with involvement of face he is definitely a victim of inhalation injury but uh, he is not it may not be so severe as compared to the person who was found unconscious in a room where um, process of burning was there that room was closed and the patient was uh, lying there and he inhaled a lot of smoke he is a 100% of victim of inhalation injury serious inhalation injury always remember otherwise uh, every fire burn patient is a victim of inhalation injury because they inhale smoke uh, uh, during the process of fire uh, but it is there it is not so severe but it is severe uh, sometimes but it is not so severe in every case but the the scenario what i was giving to you is having a serious inhalation injury the patients like this
time is uh, very short. Uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. The, main, the important thing is carbon monoxide poisoning. The smoke contains carbon monoxide. It is uh, odorless and uh, it is not so pungent. That's why patient remains asleep. Once you start inhaling, you remain asleep in that room. Uh, it, but the important thing is that once it enters into the uh, circulation, it will uh, displace the uh, oxygen from the hemoglobin and it takes its place. It, is, it has got its affinity 215 times more than the oxygen. That's why we certainly need 100% oxygen in order to dissociate it. And uh, this 100% oxygen, always remember, not you can get it on the uh, uh, common ERs of the hospitals, but you must need a specialized center for that. Always remember, whenever you will get a patient who is having a, a injury of the face as a result of fire burn, you think that this patient is having uh, initial injury, uh, get all the investigation done in order to may reach a proper diagnosis and treat it accordingly. But initially, always remember, like chemical burn, like electrical burn, in this common uh, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning or initial injury as a result of common uh, carbon monoxide is very, very important initial treatment. You, I must say, it is a life is life uh, saving, in a, especially in initial injury. Uh, you have to give patient 100% oxygen in order to save the life of the patient uh, for at least about 40 minutes in order to dissociate that uh, carbon monoxide from the hemoglobin. Once it dissociates, oxygen takes its place and patient start uh, getting its uh, proper treatment. Uh, if carbon monoxide is 15%, uh, patient uh, slight headache uh, in normal patients, was the smokers and truck drivers, they are used to it. Uh, if you will get a carboxyhemoglobin level, you will get 15% in these truck drivers or uh, smokers. And, uh, but in more than 15 to 20%, headache confusion is start and 20 to 40 percent if patient is uh, unconscious always think that the patient is having more than 50 percent carb carbo oxy hemoglobin level certainly needs what 100 percent oxygen in order to dissociate that uh, that that's all i think time is over now uh, thank you very much i think you will get an idea about the uh, uh, special types of burn. Uh, these types of burn are very, very important. And uh, as far as the, uh, the burn are concerned, uh, people think that only the fire burn is uh, uh, very, very uh, dangerous. No, no. Uh, electrical burn is more dangerous as compared to fire burn. And chemical burn is also very, very dangerous. Uh, all these burns are very, very dangerous and uh, uh, you have to be careful when you will get, especially the patient of inhalation injury, that patient certainly needs 100% oxygen in initial stages of his uh, treatment. And chemical burn, the very easy treatment of chemical burn, is splash water initially, and in electrical burn, me and in uh, fire burn, me. Uh, are the initial procedures uh, certainly needs expertise. Uh, everybody cannot uh, perform it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, inshallah, uh, we will meet soon uh, with other topics. Thank you very much.